everybody. This is Alpha from the Bernie Time Podcast, and you're listening to the Malaysian Brony Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 102, or 102, or 102. There's a number in there with two, but I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. Hey, Dan, how are you? Um, you had to repeat this episode number a few times, so now I got it. <laughs> yes, indeed, it's 102. Stop frying my brain with math, you know I failed math. I know, so that's why I need to remind you, 102. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, joining us today is James Cork. Hey, Norman. Hey, Dan. How's it going, guys? Fine, man, fine. How are you doing, man? How is everyone good? doing? <laughs> Latency. Yeah. He's drawing, totally. dude. Don't distract him. No, no, no! I can't. You know what? I can I can talk and draw at the same time. Is one of my talents. I have no. Pro- I, actually, I draw better when I'm talking. So, <laughs> you know, it'd be really good to draw. Uh, people say that my OC is really photogenic. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to mix them in in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if and I can I only make it say that to... because I know how much Norman hounds on you for uh, drawing. <laughs> uh, and that voiceover there is Alpha Brony from Brody Time. Yeah, that's me. Hey there, Alpha. How have you been doing? I'm doing good. Sh- should I do my spiel intro or should I do that later? Do that later, man. Do that later. How has your week been? It's been uh, okay. It's we're at, The worst part is the snow. It's been snowing like crazy here. We've had three days of at least 12 inches a day. Oh, man. Uh, That's so it's, fun. It looks, like the, uh, it looks like the land beyond the wall outside right now. <laughs> <laughs> Winter's coming. Yeah. Dude, seriously, have, because I'm having it. the middle. I have to keep have digging out my uh, sidewalk, and also the plow keeps coming by and piling up. So there's a wall in front of my house that at this point is at least three feet tall. And then I've had to make sort of a gate for my driveway, and those snow piles are over six feet tall now. Oh, God. So I literally have a fort built going around <laughs> in front of my house. So oh, you're into you snow sculpture now. With Valerian, you have to arm yourself with Valerian steel. It's the only thing that can kill them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a fan of Game of Thrones, so I can totally know what you're, what you're doing there. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Alpha, since you haven't been on for a while, mind taking the two important questions? Absolutely, I'll take the important questions. Okay, question number one is, who is your favorite character? Favorite pony, Derpy, because she's Derpy, and she's mm-hmm. back for season four, and she's oh, been yeah. amazing. So I'm so glad to have yes. her back and being oh, awesome. Yeah. She has been really prominent in the foreground. like Chocolate ooh. fountain. Yep, yep. That is so awesome. Yeah, and doing stuff that's funny. I liked when she was just in the background doing weird stuff, like the po- uh, the party pony episode where she's drinking out of the chocolate fountain. Oh, that's, yeah. you know, that's just awesome. Did you notice that in that scene, Derpy is in the foreground and Applejack and Rarity are in the background? But I tell you, Applejack's <laughs> definitely coming up there. I really like Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> Applejack is brilliant. I, I love AJ. She, she She's so unfairly underrated when it comes yeah, to... Yeah, she's the most grounded character, you know? And she's like, yeah, she's, she's the voice the, of reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. more so than Celestia. Earth. Oh, God, don't don't get me started on Celestia, okay? It's like, I, I'm conflicted with, with Celestia. I, I like her and all that, but sometimes she no. just... She has to be... She has to do more things. But anyway, moving on. Alpha, favorite episode? God, there's, like, been so many great ones. But uh, I, I would say so far the funniest episode has been um, Pinky Apple Pie. Whoa. Just because I was dying that entire episode because there's so many great bits. But my overall favorite episode is the Power Ponies. Because I'm a huge comic book nerd and they it was just amazing. So people don't give that enough love because it is just an awesome idea for an episode. It is. Especially like Rarity going out of jail with her snobbish look. Yeah, oh, did, God. like the Rarity Green Fabulous. Lantern. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Flower Hulk. That was the... Oh, yeah. Flutter Hulk was the absolute highlight of the episode. Come on. How can you not like that? How can you not like that transformation? She's brilliant. Yep, yeah. Yep. It was fun. It was fun. If anything, uh, the, the, wouldn't you want in something like, oh my god, this episode totally needs a uh, Power Rangers uh, reference here? Oh boy, you need the Sixth Ranger. Oh, wait, you got Spike, so that works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's the Green true. Ranger. Yeah, that, yes, he's the Green Ranger. <laughs> Yay, it all works. Awesome. So anyway, thanks, Alpha, for reminding us who's your favorite character and your favorite episode. And let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is housekeeping. Dan, you want to take this one? Yes, sir. So 
It seems like just about a couple of weeks ago we turned one year old and now on February 23rd, 2014, we're going to celebrate our second anniversary. And so we're having a pool party and dinner barbecue and all of you listening, even of you in the stream, you're invited as well. And uh, yeah, it's also going to be my last regular appearance on this show. So come on down, make this a party. Why? What's up, man? Yeah, of course there is. I'm starting work next month. So oh. I'm going to have to, you know, start. I, I want to go and like, get my priorities straight for a while first before anything else. Well, you know what? It sucks that you're going to have to stop doing this. Uh, but congratulations on getting a job. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. I mean, it's uh, I'm not going to completely stop. I'm still going to be handling, you know, the, the cables in the back for all the stuff in the show and all that. And I'll jump on whenever I can. And uh, there'll also be a small My Little Pony collectible card game tutorial for bronies who are interested in the card game. So, hmm, if you're interested in getting yourself one of the decks, want to know how you can do it, want to know just how it looks like, come on over to this place called Nine Bukit Utama. The party starts from 1 p.m., goes all the way up to 10.30 p.m., and can go even later because Malaysian parties don't stop. So bring your swimming trunks, bring a towel as well, because, yep, it's been really, really hot over the past few days, Norman. I think you can testify to that. The weather has been crazy hot. Dan, you're talking to a person who has snow. He's going to be jelly. Well, it's two extremes, my friend. I go out for five minutes, I come home drenched in sweat. <laughs> uh, the other goes out for five minutes and he's freezing. <laughs> uh, boy, no fun. At least he doesn't have to take a shower. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, if you want any more information on the meetup, just look at the show notes. Yep, you can go on over to the website. That's meetup.thembsshow.com. If you want to know how to get there, transport information, you don't own a car, you want to use uh, public transport, yep, just go on over there. And um, just before we move on, there's a little something that I also want to highlight that... If you're going to need transport and you don't own a car, you can use this new service called Uber that runs in cities. It's basically a taxi service that uh, uses your GPS and your smartphone to find you and then send you places. You can sign up using a link. Um, we'll put it in the show notes, uber.com slash invite slash Uber MBS show, and uh, it'll give you 60 ringgit worth of credit for a taxi ride. Oh, that's cool. That is so, wonderful. Yeah. And hey, by the way, you two can get it as well and go on over and, uh, you know, take a ride around your old town as well. It's a, it's a worldwide service. That sounds like something out of the future. That's unbelievable. Well, the future is here, my friend. Yeah, that's cool. It sounds like something you will see in, like, um, Blade Runner. <laughs> Well, but it doesn't spawn a taxi in front of your house, you know, you have to wait for the guy to come. <laughs> no, 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 but it's cool, that's cool, that's, that's brilliant. And apparently in the States, they, you can even get a taxi cheaper than a, a regular yellow cab because they come in a Prius and they cut the cost or something like that. Mm. That could work, you know, they might come in a snowmobile. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Alpha. Wait, why, what? Yeah, this guy's keep reminding you that it's cool outside. Yeah, well. I'm trying to help! <laughs> it's kind of hard to Well, you're that. not. <laughs> But anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, Michael Morones is getting better. Yay! Yes! Earlier in January this year, 11-year-old Michael Morones attempted to take his own life because of the stress of being bullied. Luckily enough, his older brother, Angel, managed to save him from death. But this has left him with serious brain damage. Currently, his health has gotten better his body is starting to wake up and his brain is very slowly starting to function again. He no longer needs IV, medication or sedation. There are recent signs of neurological function present in Michael's body that have not previously existed. As such, the next step includes moving him to a wheelchair. Links can be found in the show notes. So Michael is getting better. This is good. This is good. That's great news. Uh I I I I swear, you know, if if he finally makes a full recovery and everything, I think I won't be able to hold the saw in. That's going to be so wonderful. Indeed, indeed. It's already it's, nothing short of a miracle right now. Yeah, they said it. They they say it like that. It's like wow, this is kind of like a miracle re- recovery. And when the doctors are saying that, that that means kind of something, you know. Indeed, indeed. When people say send your good feelings, send your support, even if you cannot help economically wise, send support, emails, messages, everything, that gets through. Believe it or not, it gets through. So mm-hmm. keep going with the positivity. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. 
And also, you know, he a fun fact about Michael Morones and how he's been recovering is that he's not just a fan of My Little Pony, but he's a fan of uh, the a cappella group Pentatonix as well, and as and also uh, the violinist Lindsay Sterling, if you follow her on YouTube. And they have each made individual arrangements to go and play for him. Now, imagine that you're, you know, the kind of motivation you will feel when an artist you're a huge fan of comes to your side and plays you your music. And I think the two of them, the both the Pentatonix and Lindsay Sturdy have done a really, really great job to come out of their way to help Michael. I had no idea they did that. That's, how, that's amazing. Yeah. That's why I just noticed it of late and I thought, it's everything, it's always the bronies helping him. It's always the bronies helping him. And then I realized that, you know, it can't be just the bronies. I'm sure his story must have touched others as well. And that's when I found out that it did touch a lot of many other people. I'm glad to hear that from Lindsay Sterling. I've heard a couple of her things uh, and she's really cool. I loved her Assassin's Creed cover she did. That's how I first heard about her. So yay for Lindsay. She does a good um, Halo cover as well. You know what? This this is a good news. This is good news. Recently, the Rony fandom has been berated with bad news, and this news is good. It's what we needed. Yep. Definitely. It is very easy to get yourself caught on the uh, negativity that comes from the fandom, especially if you if you only read that. Like if you follow blogs that talk about the drama or the negativity and all that, you can get yourself wrapped into a lot of negative stuff. So you end up saying, "Oh my God, why am I part of this fandom?" Uh, however, if you put yourself into the, in just focusing on the positive, you get the exact same thing, but inverted. It's like, oh my god, this fandom is only sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> That's not true either. You have to keep a balance. You have and to. It's, it's also about um, being able to see things optimistically as well. I understand what you mean, but uh, of late I saw this Facebook post, and especially a couple of days ago, I'm sure you all have seen this on your walls as well. People complaining about Valentine's Day. You know, I'm single, nobody wants me, blah, blah, blah. It's been like going on and on and on. People just been complaining their heads off. And I used to be like that until I, you know, took a turn on the whole event and I realized, you know, it's actually pretty nice seeing the whole town in my favorite color. <laughs> You know, I like Valentine's Day because I'm happy to know that there is happy people out there. That there, there's people that be, that are being um, happy with each other. So just thinking that there is happiness and positivity out there makes me happy. I don't have a girlfriend. Uh, I don't have any intention to get one. To be honest with you, I'm and not, neither do not I. In a hurry. Not not in a hurry. Not in a hurry. James, what would you say? Everything is awesome. Oh no. <laughs> Shut up! Do not sing that song. I'm banning that song from this podcast. Do, no, no. Until uh, until okay. until Rarity jumps out of the street screen onto his lap, he's gonna ban it. So, oh god, no! That goddamn song just. Yes, you know, you know, brainworms and everything. We have find a song that can outrule winter wrap up as a, as a near worm. Okay. Like, if you cannot stop singing Winter Wrap Up, just go to someone and go, everything is a song, and then you have ruined his life. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, Valentine's Day, I saw this thing that sort of encapsulated perfectly talking about people who complain about Valentine's Day, hmm? and it was tweeting about being alone on Valentine's Day is why you're alone on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and it's, okay. it's all a matter of perspective and mental, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway... With all those complaints and negativity, we need some positive things. And yep. you know what, Michael, getting better, that's positive. That is a great thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, you guys want to hear something real cute real quick? What is yeah, it? go ahead. Okay, Asher, who's your favorite pony? G-Sage. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, boy. That's good. Good choice. Yay! Good choice. <laughs> that's awesome of you. That is a really good choice. Good taste. A true role. We watched the episode on repeat a bunch. Oh, Same here. Let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is negativity. Negativity? Uh, wait, what? Really? Kind of, but not really. What kind of negativity? Uh, people's opinions. Oh, wow. We're going to... Uh, okay, are we going there, Norman? Almost, almost. Let me just read it first, and we'll see what the reaction is. Okay. Equestria Girls, Rainbow Rocks, trailer up on Entertainment Weekly, and expect 12 songs from it. In a recent post by Entertainment Weekly, Hasbro Studio revealed an exclusive trailer for My Little Pony, Equestria Girl, Rainbow Rocks. It's happening, people. It's happening. <laughs> this is the second feature film featuring the girls from Cantalot High. Not much is known about the movie and little was given from the trailers. But Daniel Ingram, songwriter for the movie, has confirmed that 12 songs will be featured in it. Also, in a recent Hasbro Investor webcast, the movie will be shown in theaters. Things can be found in the show notes. So, gents, I'm going to go around the table, starting with Dan. What do you think of this? 
<sighs> I don't know. Especially with um, the latest uh, rumor that there's going to be five more years of My Little Pony. If they screw this up, I don't know how long more I'm going to be in this fandom. Hey, guess what, guess what, guess Aww. what I just forgot. Okay, so there's five more seasons, right? Five more years. Well, well, seasons, years, same difference, you know. That's how they sort of break it up. I don't know how so, this works. <laughs> okay, so let's say five more seasons. Yeah, that's right. usually the base where they do it. So, And we still have five of the main six who aren't alicorns. Oh God! <laughs> well, every season, a new alicorn. <laughs> so the destiny of these five remaining. And, the, and, and wait, and, and the best part is on the fifth one, it, Applejack's the last, but she still doesn't become an alicorn. So that's. <laughs> and then Big oh, Mac becomes God, the alicorn, dude. right? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> he gets hit with the alicorn beam instead of her. So she thought it was. She thought ends. it was a curse, and he took the bullet. <laughs> Somebody uh, take that, that idea to Mike Bogle. That's gonna happen. <laughs> Yes, do it. Uh, okay, well, um, Alpha, you said your share. Um, what about you, James? Okay, one thing that I wanted to add is that uh, Megan McCarthy was sort of confirmed as the writer for the movie because she said that she spent, uh, she said on a tweet that she spent the, the, her summer vacation of 2013 writing the movie. So it's going to be the same writer as the first movie. So we're going to be fine on the writing department. Yeah, I wouldn't worry so much about it. I am really, really optimistic about this this sequel. No sarcasm, no irony, no nothing. I think this movie is going to be really good. I don't think any of us are like doubting the team working on it. I mean, it was the same team who did the first movie. I just think it's everyone's like, really, another one? Everyone wants to see the pony movie, you know? Yeah, and we still haven't seen that, and I think that's where a lot of oh, the you know, backlash the thing is, is that coming from. I think this show doesn't work in movie format, but the idea of Equestria Girls does. No, the the show will work in movie format because if you notice no, it how won't. rushed the no. episodes are. Anyway, um, hold that thought for a while, and let's move on to topic time because topic time has something related with what we're going to talk about. And in today's topic time, with the recent announcement of Equestria Girls 2 Rainbow Rocks, the fandom has been in a state of pandemonium, with the majority of the fandom disliking the movie before it even premieres. Will the 12th song by Daniel Ingram calm the raging fans, or will it take no heed? Join us as we try to make sense of this chaos. And, gents, before we even started this topic... Is already chaotic. And you know what? Let's take it from James, because you had something good to say. Yeah, please yeah, check the metal detector. <laughs> okay, on, uh, honestly, the, the fandom has been in a state of panic since last year, okay? It's been in a state of panic since they turned Twilight into an alicorn. That's, that's how the fandom has been. It's like, ah! That's how the Verani fandom sounds right now, okay? Yeah. It sounds like a broken siren. That's how it sounds. Going crazy every five days. Like, oh my god, what is this? This is something new. I don't like it. I'm, it's going to suck. It's going to ruin the show forever. This movie, in my opinion, this movie is going to be fine. It's going to be fun. And it's going to be in the same line as, as the first one. So, something to... Uh, some food for thought there. If you didn't like the first movie, I think it's best... For you to stay away from the second, before you go watch the second, don't like it, and decide to fill the internet with your vitriol and hatred, okay? One thing is your opinion, the other thing is just going vindictive on a movie that hasn't done anything bad to you. It has, from the trailer, it has a very strong feel to the 80s, to the TV show Jen and the Holograms, Yay. because the movie, is, the movie is going to be truly, truly outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> But it's wonderful because if you remember in the 80s, there wasn't that much judgment about uh, what children could watch on TV. If you, I, I, I had friends who were huge fans of Rainbow Bright, and I saw children riding on bikes that were pink colored, and nobody said anything bad to them. I wasn't around but during the 80s. I, well, I kind of was. I was like five years old when the, when the 80s ended, and it was a wonderful time. But then everything, okay. everything, everything became a bit I don't want to say darker, I don't want to say worse, but things kind of changed to people start judging what others liked and what others couldn't like and what was boy stuff and what was girl stuff. This movie feels kind of like going back to that formula. And in my opinion, it's fine. It's going to be okay, guys. Don't freak hmm. out. And in the end, it's a movie. Remember the Mystery Science Theater 3000 mantra. It's just a show. I should really just relax. True indeed. And Elsa, what about you? I can really take it or leave it. You know, it, it was a cute uh, show the way it was, movie-wise. But I was kind of like, meh, I saw it and I didn't see any need to really love it. 
And so I think, you know, with hopefully it's kind of like the same deal with you get with like a superhero origin story mm-hmm. where the first movie is usually just world building. And then the sequels, by the time you really get to start to uh, to do stuff with that universe. And hopefully that's what's going to happen with Equestria Girls, too, because otherwise it's just, I don't need to see high school because I don't care. Mm-hmm. OK. And then. Huh. Oh, boy. Where do I start? <laughs> OK. Go no, it's go, just, go now. It's not really going nuts. It's, everyone's telling me I should give it a try. And that's exactly what happened in Equestria Girls 1. And everyone's saying, hey, you know what? Equestria Girls 1 turned out right. And I say, no, it turned out right for you. In my head, it's still a disaster. And the fact that and you know people are saying, oh, Daniel Ingram's got 12 songs. No offense, Daniel Ingram, but in Equestria Girls, you know, the Through the Mirror, I think the first song, whatever they call it, only one of the songs really shined through. And uh, there were like six songs in there. Cafeteria song. Yeah, the cafeteria songs, the only song that really shined through. Heck, even the song in the first trailer didn't even come out. And that, I thought, was a nice song, but it never even came out. So, yeah, I was wondering what happened to that. Uh, and um, I don't know. I just don't think that it's taking the direction that I want it to. But, heck, I'm just one guy, so, you know. You know, that's the problem, I think. Uh, personally, I hope you know that the same way you say it's your opinion, people are going to say the same about you. Dan, it is your opinion. In your opinion, the movie sucks. In your opinion, the movie is a disaster. My opinion is, is not the same as yours. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I don't think it's right to impose our opinion on others. I'm not going to try and change your mind about this movie. I just hope it's, you it's don't not, try not, and make other not, people change their minds about it. It's not that. It's I don't talk about it unless I'm asked to. And I'm no, I've never written a single comment or anything out of my own initiative on Rainbow Rocks. It's only when, hey, check it out, check it out, Daniel. What do you think of Rainbow Rocks? I said, I think it's going to suck. So, you know, I don't speak until I'm spoken to regarding the topic. Oh, come on. Well, okay, I mean, but he, James, it's his opinion. No matter how wrong it is, it's still his opinion. Yeah, that's it. I, I know, I know. I just hope he knows that just because it's his opinion, he has no right to impose it on anybody. Really true, true. I'm not imposing it. I only state it out when someone asks me for it. Because I, I, know, I know I've got nothing nice to say about it, so I try not to say anything. No, it's true. We did ask him for it. So, I mean, we kind of asked for it. <laughs> uh, no, but still, I mean, Dan, your opinion is there and no matter how wrong it is blah 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 we can repeat that one show how many times but still it's your opinion and you know what we haven't watched it yet and for some people like for james for example he can't wait to watch it because it's going to be like the 80s for alpha it's going to be yeah i take it or leave it if it's there i'll probably watch it and and for dan it's going to say uh i'm not gonna watch it what Uh, it's on yeah yeah i'm gonna Watch it, yeah. Rah, 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 rah. It's not that I cannot wait to watch it. Is that my? Uh, I am not going to judge it before watching it. That would be unfair. That, to say, oh, the movie is going to suck. The movie is going to be great. I'm not saying it's going to be great. I'm just saying that I am hopeful for it. But I'm keeping myself, you know, contained. I don't want to get a lot of we. I don't want to get my wishful thinking out of the bag. If you know what I mean. Mm, okay. Okay. Understandable. Is that if I get my wishful thinking out of the bag, then I end up uh, I, I end up doing a Pokemon the movie uh, again. Oh, which yeah. is, no, really, really. Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear disappointment? <laughs> I was screaming internally when I want to watch the first Pokemon movie. That movie sucks. <laughs> that movie sucks. And I was hyped for it. So ever since I learned not to hype myself for anything. Or hype myself a lot. That's actually, you know what? I, I'm going to give an, a, a word of advice for everyone listening right now. Those on the stream and those wa- uh, watching this on, on YouTube. If you're going to watch something, do either of these two things. Do not hype yourself at all or hype yourself so much that when you watch whatever you're watching, it, you don't care how bad it is because you have sort yourself so much that you are like, I don't care, this is awesome. <laughs> that had happened before, Iron Man 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, God, that movie is disappointing. Yeah, and as for me, as for me, I would have to say I can't wait to watch it because I'm interested in that world. And you know what? It starts off with ponies and it goes to the human world. And since I guess it's already 30 moons... We can see what's going on with Sunset Shimmer. Is she nice or is she mean? What's the whole situation now? 
Honestly speaking, I can't wait because this reminds me of another anime that features high school musician girls. And that anime is k -On. And you know what? I don't mind. Some of my friends say k -On was not that good. Some of my friends say it was awesome. And you know what? I'm going into Equestria Girls with an open mind and I'm going to see if this is going to rock my socks off or not. That's the best attitude to go with. Indeedy. Now, I, no, I, I no. would actually say I would watch it, but the thing is that even if it's good, as Alpha said earlier, it's the pony movie that, well, we want, and in particular, I want no, a pony the mo movie. That, you know what? Okay, that's the thing. A pony movie wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. That kind of show, the format it has, it works for two-parters. It doesn't work for a full feature, 90-minute long, 80-minute long movie. It doesn't. No matter how hard you try, it doesn't work. It will fall apart because this show is way more, is way more intelligent than that. If you want a movie that is long, if, if you want a, a long pony movie, you have to put a lot of... That's not a word! ...in it. Hmm. You have to put a lot of, like, tropes in it that make the movie feel and uh, look longer. Mm. But now you I don't, don't think so. to, to me the episode... I, I can say it, it's it's that rough. can't be true because we had several like two-parter episodes where if you made a three-parter episode, well, there you go. There's your movie. Hmm. But that's the thing. It's just a matter of to make some movie, sort of epic story. A, you can make a three-parter easy. In fact, you know what? I have the feeling that the finale for season four is going to be a three-parter. It looks like it. It, looks, it. it feels like it's building up to it. It will make sense. You don't need to make a movie when you already have a show with movie quality storytelling and animation and character development. This show has better characters than many movies out there. Yeah, but it's characters like, okay. are just one part of the show, you know. I mean, if you you don't have to go and take them out into a different world. You know, there's a lot of other things you can do in the space that's been created that is Equestria. Hmm. Like just in, in Cantalot alone, Cantalot hasn't been explored in depth. You know, there's so many e things up there. Equestria is a very, very big place that has a lot of things. It's a very, it's a huge universe that is exactly. better to be expanded in a TV show. That's the reason why we don't have a Game of Thrones movie. We have a Game of Thrones TV show. If you try to put everything that Game of Thrones offers on a TV on a movie, you're going to leave a lot of stuff out. It's the same thing with MLP. MLP is very rich when it comes to its mythology, its locations and everything. I'm not saying that Game of Thrones, uh, MLP is like Game of Thrones. No. I'm just saying that in terms of things that happen, it's very similar. It has a lot of stuff in it that develops much better on a TV, for, on a TV show format. Like on a season, how many hours do you have on a season? Uh, let's see. How much? One, 10, eight. 12 hours? Yeah, about that much. 10, 9, yeah, you have 12 yeah, and between 9 and 10 hours worth of, of TV show to expand this universe. Try to cram all of that on a movie. What you get is Last Airbender. Oh and no, by N. Night Shyamalan. Okay, Nobody's try to cram a season of a TV show. No, but no, you're asking for that. You're saying that. You want a pony movie. You, no, have, you have to cram what? all of that. No, you I'm want to make a movie. And a what? movie has to be accessible for everyone watching it. If you make a movie just for the fans, you end up crushing it unless you are George Lucas and you're making Star Wars. No, okay? Yeah, I'm not asking you need to make the movie like, accessible yeah, for so everyone watching it. You cannot make a movie accessible just for the fans. You're going to make references to a lot of things that people don't know about. I didn't then say you end up with a box office disaster. No, no, this I is why I don't, I don't understand why people hate the Transformers movies. Transformers, directed by Michael Bay, made Transformers accessible to a lot of fans. They don't reference the TV show whatsoever. They created your new universe, and it opened yes, the door they did. to people. They totally did reference much... it. There's a lot of inside gags, if you know what to look for, as far as but like cause of the, the TV show. They are, but they're not the focus. Yeah, they are. They are because like, they're no, they're he not. knew he was making that movie for guys who are like... 18 to 30 was what they were going for. So oh, you had yeah, a lot of, of sex and boob jokes. You had Megan Fox because she's Megan Fox. And they had yeah, a bunch of like different Mumble, callbacks. Mumblebee the from the TV show is so the same as the Mumblebee from the movies, right? But the reason or I how said... About, but they're also how about made sound, like sound, sound years years didn't have a Mercedes brand on the TV show? <laughs> that was the from the movies. Those, those two things were made years apart. So you have like... Bottom line. TV show Bottom line. Bottom We're talking about as far as the Pony line. movie that is just <laughs> taking a very epic storyline with the crew who made the TV show and just stretching it out, you know, not putting the commercial breaks on. So they don't have to Bottom rush line. anything. It can Bottom definitely be done. If they can make the, a 90 minute long high Bottom school line about the TV. Ponies, they can make a regular show.
Bottom line about the MLP movie starring MLP characters and not the Questlove girls. You cannot make that movie accessible to everyone who's going to watch it because people are going to get lost. And that's why I think it's... That's not a word! To be honest, because if you look at how the episodes are running, especially those in the beginning of season three, have you noticed... This is something I give advice to, especially to writers, because I'm a writer myself. There is a thing that I call the line to time ratio, as in how fast a movie or any story proceeds. If you notice, in the beginning of season three, a lot of the episodes went very smoothly till the end. It felt like you just, it felt like a plane crash. It just was going so well. And this suddenly, oh, we need to finish this. Let's just take it down as fast as we can. Bang. You know, I, I felt if they let the story. That's what happened in the, one, in the Canterlot wedding. That's what happened in the Canterlot wedding. Exactly. That is See, exactly they... the problem that episode had. If a Canterlot wedding had been a three parter, and it had a much better pacing. It and would have been a great episode. As it stands, it has a... That's not a word! ...first part, and then it has a very good second part. But it's rushed. The second part of the episode is severely rushed. You cannot put that. If you realize, if you make it a three-parter, you're going to have... That's not a word! ...your way through it. Right? I know. That's not a word! You have content to get put inside. No, you guys have no idea. Have you watched the, f- the third, third season of Doctor Who? When the master takes over the world, are they, act- they actually That's not a word. their way through it in the last 10 minutes of the episode. That's what's going to happen if you try to make a My Little Pony movie. They're going to have to That's not a word. their way out of it in the last 10 minutes. And it's going to suck. If you- That's not a word. No, if, they are not making, if they are not making an MLP movie, it's for good reasons. No, I think it's because of M.A. Larson. But then if you have 10 minutes to... That's not a word! If you take that 10 minutes, extend it to half an hour to tell a proper, decent story, you've got yourself a movie. You know what? It doesn't matter what I say to you right now. You just want to be right. So I think I'm just going to drop the subject. No, no, no. You're making an assumption as to what kind of MLP movie I want. And, you know, I don't want a full season crammed into a movie. I don't you want... Don't know what you you don't know what you want. For starters, you have no idea what you want. I do if know, you know I, what you want. No, no, you don't know what you want. You so don't. That's why you are not in charge of Hasbro and DHX. Because you don't know what you want. <laughs> All right, gents. Um, this has been really interesting. But, you know, I have to... Do you want to complain about which pony's best pony now? <laughs> give me a second now. That's going you're, to you're, end you're up gonna in... You're going to start a war. <laughs> you're going to start a war. <laughs> but give me a second. Let, let me have my say in this. Because I've been quite in the background listening to what you have to say. And you know what? I can see where James is coming from, and I can see where you guys is coming from. And from what I hear from you guys, it's understandable. Um, from James's opinion, uh, having a three-part ending or a three-part season finale is almost like a movie. That is true, because one episode is about 20 minutes long. If you cram everything, it's be 60 minutes, and it'll be like a one-hour movie kind of deal. So that's awesome. And from your guys' perspective, you want a dedicated... 60 plus minute movie dedicated to that situation with the ponies instead of the humans. And you know what? I, I can see it both ways. From James's point of view, the writers did it and they gathered all the characters, they gathered all the story and everything so on. And from you guys' point of view, you want a dedicated story telling the whole backstory of whatever story movie plot they're going to use. And you know what? I I can see it from both sides, really. And both ideas are good. They can work. James says they've done it with the two-parters and maybe for the season four finale with the three-parters, that's good. And your guys saying that since they can do that, why not do it for the movie, right? And you know what? I can see it both ways. And in my personal opinion, with what's going on with the movie... Is Hasbro's bottom line. They want to earn a buck. That's why they're doing the movie, honestly. is to sell toy. If they're not doing that in the first place, they're not going to sell toys. The show's okay. They have ad revenues in the hub or wherever it is showing. The company buys the rights to show the series on the station and stuff. And... With the movie, they get to sell swags like the dolls or the playsets or the DVDs or whatever it is. And I can see it from both sides. We all want a good story, but the main issue is what Hasbro wants. And Hasbro wants money. Since Equestria Girls 1 made a lot of money in theaters, why not do it again? 
you guys have to remember something. We are a very, very small portion of the fan base. My Little Pony remains a TV show for little girls. And the majority of the audience are little girls. We are the ones who just hop on the ride and we are complaining about it. We are the ones riding free on this train and we are complaining about it. No, 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 we're not riding free. We're paying for episodes. No, we are. We were, we, nobody called us to, to this party. We stepped into it. And yeah, we, we're when bringing we the scream, revenue. We have we as scream, much right to be here we, as everyone else. When we, when we scream, when we get angry, when we get mad, when we don't like something, and I say we because I include myself in it because I'm in here with you guys, we look ridiculous. I never say people stop saying your opinion. I never say people stop voicing your, uh, your thoughts. I'm just saying stop doing it like that. There is, there is way more polite ways to speak your mind than what you're doing right now. I'm throwing not just a jab at, uh, at everyone who didn't like the first movie, but I'm also throwing a jab at brownie analyst community that drives me crazy every single week because I'm getting tired of that. Like, last week kind of like slowed down, but now it's completely out of control. It needs to stop. I'm not saying the opinions, I'm saying the tone. The tone needs to be Wait, what are we talking about? more polite. I'm talking uh, about the I'm talking about the excess of criticism in the in the Brony fandom right now. I kind of segue topics. Yay, myself segues. But honestly, gents, this has been a really interesting topic. And if you guys need want to voice your opinions out now, please do do, do so. Meh. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Well, I think I've expressed it a lot. And as I said, you know, I've really got nothing really nice to say about it. So I won't add. Anyway, with those discussions out of the way, thank you, gents, for shouting out your opinions and starting a flame war. This is going to be I like, fun. I, li- I like how you're still calling us gents. <laughs> you know what? In the olden days, they used boxing gloves or they slapped each other's face with their white glove thingy and... Do it out with guns. And in today's day and age, we just use the internet to slap fight. <laughs> and you know what? To, to make things a bit more positive, let's talk to Alpha. Alpha has been quiet, and that's rare. Well, yeah, I'll just let you guys go on, so... <laughs> Sit back, make some popcorn, watch the fight. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So anyway, um, guys, if you don't mind, let's let Alpha talk for a while. And Alpha, how have you been doing? Like, I heard your show reach episode 62? Yeah, <laughs> so we're uh, right now on a little bit of a break because uh, one is Valentine's Day weekend and the next weekend's my birthday, so we're not recording again until the 1st of uh, Mar- March. Wow. Okay, happy birthday in advance. Yay. Thank you, appreciate it. Happy birthday, man. So, Alpha, mind telling us who you got on your show? Which one? Well, most of the shows. Like, if I remember right, you got Josh Haber on for your show before Castlemania was... Um, to be shown? Yeah, we had uh, Josh Haber, and then we also had Natasha Lovinger uh, on in the same episode, and uh, to talk you about... You uh, Lauren Faust on the show. Oh, yeah. And we had Lauren Faust, too, yeah. Oh, my uh, God, that's amazing. But uh, the way we set up is that we try and, like, interview someone every episode, and we usually have, like, people from, like, cons coming on or other podcasts or musicians, pretty much anyone who's doing something in the Brony community. Mm. We have them on to talk about all the stuff they're doing, so it's always been fun and always interesting to talk about other people and their projects too. So, oh, that's cool. That's cool because I've listened to your show, and I have to say you're doing a great job. And I'm not sucking up to you right now because I may want a spot on your show. <laughs> uh, I appreciate so, it. How did you get that interview with Josh Haber? Well, we asked him. Oh, really? That's, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it was actually uh, Five Iron had uh, contacted him. A while ago, and because we learned he was going to be one of the writers, you know, and asked if he wanted to come on the show. I uh, didn't hear anything until like months later. He's like, Yeah, I got the clearance, I can come on. So, oh. like, Yay! <laughs> that, that is an interesting interview because, how do I put this? When hearing you guys talk about stuff, I, I can hear him tiptoe around the table or around the issue, not stepping on the ego matter because, oh, uh, we can't talk about it because, no, no, can't, can't talk about yeah. it. That was fun trying to figure, you know, like what can be said and what can't be said, you know, and uh, it was neat because I didn't want to have any spoilers too, but at the same time, I, you know, wanted to know, 
insight. So we plan on trying to have him back on again now that he's had a couple episodes air and Natasha's had her episodes air as well. So we can talk to them a little bit more in depth and sort of go back and talk about stuff that we've seen and how it all comes together. Oh, cool. So I can't wait for that that's cool. interview because, you know, I listen to your show regularly and you know what? Sometimes I have to put it on hold because me and James here do a review episode and you guys talk about spoilers on the show. So yeah, I kind of, yeah, we do. I try to avoid that before. <laughs> But no, that's just me. We do our best to keep our reviews uh, very on the uh, positive kind of like fair side, mm-hmm. where we talk about the good stuff and the and the and the bad stuff. But it's uh, it's in the end, it's just all uh, opinion show. Mm-hmm. Um, what what criteria do you guys follow to uh, pick on your guests? Because according to Norman, you had a bunch of show guests, including none other than Lauren Faust. Oh, yeah, it's pretty much as far as uh, we just go with. Uh, People who we're stuff we've seen or heard and that we'd like to get a chance to talk to. Everyone has a bunch of stuff going on and there's so many different projects happening out there. So it's really cool to try and like talk to people about what they're doing. So it's kind of like one of those things where someone has a project coming out or someone has something that we've heard. Um, we just try and get a hold of them. There's still some people that we have like lined up that we still haven't had a chance to get to, but we've wanted to for a while, but it just hasn't happened yet. I don't That's want to say anything, cause, well, because uh, we haven't, like, finalized anything, but, mm-hmm. you know, we, we always look for more people, and so we always look for insight as well, so if there's someone doing something, they can reach out to us, or fans can, like, contact us and say, hey, uh, could you talk to this person, and we'll try and get that done as well. Actually, the one that we're going to be doing in March, we're talking to a couple of guys from Everfree Northwest, and uh, they're starting a podcast uh, about music. It's sort of tied in with the convention. Ah. And so we'll have a chance to talk about more of them when we come back. So we're definitely looking out forward to, for, you know, we're looking forward to that and seeing how that turns out. That seems like one of the coolest conventions out there. I cannot wait to listen to the episode, actually. And you know what? Talking about conventions and guests, my friend James here, he's doing a live stream for his project to go to Buck. Maybe you want to interview him? <laughs> Oh yeah, man! I, you know what? I I am biting my tongue because I hate to bring myself up in a, in anything. Uh, I consider myself the least important person on the planet uh, because I consider everyone around me the most important person in the the most important people in the world. Why? Thank you. Like if, if if they no really if they ever make a movie about me, I'm going to be a cameo <laughs> because everyone else is really really important. Uh, I'm not. I'm just insignificant. So I hate to bring my uh, my project to go to back, and that's why I have guys like Norman, guys like uh, Sketchy Sounds from Everfree Network. They they do they they whore myself out for me. They, they, <laughs> I I hate to use that term, but they are like my pimps. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, yeah, look at this, this guy, he's doing a live stream, and I'm like, oh, please no. Oh, I am like flutter shine today's episode. Um. But yeah, I'm trying to get to uh, the Brony UK convention. That's uh, uh, back. I need like two thousand five hundred dollars, and my intention to go to that con is I want to do a panel on uh, po- ask pony tumbler blocks and how to do them right, and I kind of like be uh, uh, representing the pony tumbler community. And I'm saying this now because I told this to several people and everybody's saying, oh my God, yes, you need to be representing the Pony Tumblr community. You're good at that and you're good at that. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you are. Come on, you have to do it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? I'm always available. It'd be wonderful if I, uh, if I can get in on your show, guys. That, that, that would be brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, keep in contact and we'll try and organize that too. So, we got a couple lined up, so. That'd be cool. Awesome. That's brilliant. And talking about conventions and stuff, I might be trying to make my way to the UK. I might be going to Buck. Keyword might. That'd be cool. So who knows? The NBS show might do a panel there. Yay. You know what? If you do, I'll be there to do the po- the, the podcast with you, of course. We'll do it live in the same room. Yay. That will be a first. And you know what, James? If we do do that, we need to have... Sketchy on. Of course. Sketchy is like a regular now. He comes every now and yeah. then. That will be wonderful. Yeah, he'll be there like, hey guys, how are you doing? 
But no, seriously, uh, I, I might be going to Buck this year. So who knows? If I do, you'll hear an announcement of it. If not, eh, it's far expensive. Budget Euro. And you know what? The pounds is a bit too high for my currency. But still, but still. I might be going to Buck and meet all the people at Buck. And who knows? Uh, I might say hello to everyone. And if their show gets on, I might say good stuff to them and interview them and also pimp out other shows that they should go on to like uh, Alpha Brony and Five Irons Brony time so yeah Yay. time to start mining your Dogecoin and you know <laughs> building up a nice bank to get out there <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously um, uh, enough about me nobody cares about me it's about uh, Alpha Brony now so Alpha where can they find your show bronytime.com uh, we're also on iTunes Stitcher we also uh, our show premieres Monday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on CelestiaRadio.com, and they can also get it on PonyvilleLive.com as well. Wow, that's awesome. Awesome. You, you, basically, you're everywhere on the internet where ponies are related. Pretty much, yeah. Well, I am so the jelly right now. Thanks, Alpha, for covering our guest slot for this week. Absolutely. Glad to help. It's been awesome to talk to you, and it's been a while, man. It really has, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would like to apologize for being so super hyper. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes the negativity of this fandom gets to me, and I get very being dic- It's funny. The negativity makes me negative about <laughs> it. It's like, oh, God, I am so negative about the negativity. But anyway, I'll link everything in the show notes, and let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout-outs, not shout-at. But you know what? Let's play a game. Who do you want to shout at? Uh, as for me, I'm going to shout at um, Daniel and James and Alpha, thanks for being on the show and making things really interesting. Ah, oh, glad to be help. That's a good way to put it. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> God, I feel like I'm that's not a word right now. <laughs> it's cool, man. Shout out to all of you here because, well, it was a very painful decision I had to make to you know have to give the show a break to start work, and I'm really glad to be on this episode with you all since it's going to be one of my last. And um, also, big shout out to Mighty Michael because he's doing well. That's right. Oh. That is right. You know what? I'm going to give a shout out to Mighty Michael as well. Kid, you're going to pull through and it's going to be awesome. You're going to make it. We know it. And of course, going to make a shout out to uh, to Daniel. And although I scream at him enough, <laughs> uh, giving a shout out to him. And of course, a shout out to Alpha Brownie because, hey, um, I'm so sorry. I think I'm going to start. I'm going to start apologizing today. I'm going to stop on Monday. <laughs> that was very if polite. you feel really bad about it, you could always draw my OC. That'd be cool. You know what? The, the first time that uh, these two guys interviewed me, I did, I did a drawing of their OCs. So can we make a, make a drawing of your OC and everyone else in the show while I'm getting it's interviewed? Fine. So expect that. Yay! And Alpha, what about you? Shout us to give out to. Gosh, uh, I gotta give shout outs to Five Iron, of course, uh, for helping me out. Uh, and pretty much any of the guests that we've had on, uh, we really do appreciate it, and all our listeners. Uh, we do the show for our listeners, so we're always uh, glad to get their help and support. So, yay for listening to our shows. We like you guys. And your show is awesome, by the way. One of the best Bruni podcasts out there. Thank you. And, well, I'm proud to be one of the few guests that appeared on. And you know what? Um, people should listen to you guys. I shall put in a link somewhere on the show notes. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie, but we'll message you stuff and tweet about how editing the show is stressful for her. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I'll tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And then? Uh, you can reach me at Saint Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. I speak when I'm spoken to. Then you need to be more happy. Tweet about pictures of food. <laughs> no, tweet, no, no, you tweet me pictures of food. I'm trying to lose weight, so... <laughs> that doesn't make me any bit happier. Tweet either. him. Tweet pictures of food. Make him suffer. <laughs> then, I, then I open the fridge and they're like, where's the food? <laughs> James, what about you? You can find me on Twitter at James Cork uh, with a lower dash in between and the words uh, K 
capitalize, of course. Uh, you can check my DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com, and you can check my Ask Pony blog at askmovieslate.tumblr.com. All righty then. And Alpha, where can they find you on Twitter? I am at Alpha underscore Brony. I'm also on Tumblr at alpha-brony.tumblr.com, and I also have ask-ironponyfitness.tumblr.com as well. Ooh, we need to do something with that too someday. How is that Tumblr blog been doing? Uh, slow. <laughs> uh, I usually try and like uh, retweet or post stuff that's uh, I found that's interesting. Uh, but I'm always uh, looking for insight or to help, you know, give people good advice. Actually, speaking about that, have you talked to Jordan Browns yet? Um, Jack's Blade. I actually haven't, which is surprising. You should. You, you <laughs> should get him on the show. You know, you, I love episode. that guy. I love Jack's Blade. He's awesome. Pro tip, talk about Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, that, that will set him off. Indeed. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. That guy is not only funny, he's, he's such a great guy. You can, mm-hmm. you can set him off either with Ponies, Dragon Ball, or Sonic the, the Hedgehog. Shy. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, God, we, we need to talk about that one later. But anyway, uh, also <laughs> please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Daniel Anthony. I have been a very angry James Cork. I'm sorry. And I'm Alpha Brony. And we'll see you next week with less anger and more happiness. I hope. <laughs> bye bye. Peace. Bye. I need to buy bubble tea. Keeps me going
I guess it's already 30 moons. We can see what's going on with Sunset Shimmer. Is she nice or is she mean? What's the whole situation now? Uh, she owns a meth lab. <laughs> you'll, be watching, you'll be watching too much Breaking Bad. Okay, yeah. Honestly speaking? Snips, snails, we have to bake. <laughs> Well, I think I've expressed it a lot. And as I said, you know, I've really got nothing really nice to say about it. So I won't add. Daniel, you sound like a, like a downer when you say that. I am a negative guy. That's who I am. It's like, it's like I have nothing nice to say about it. You have to say that with your voice from Winnie the Pooh. It's like, I have nothing nice to say about well, it. I've got nothing to say about it. That's nice. You can just leave me here. Well, if that's okay. I'll go look for my tail somewhere beneath this no. bush. You know what? If this was... You, you are Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I haven't watched that yet. I <laughs> had fun. I had fun once. Oh! <laughs> that's where it came from. Uh, hey, James, what about um, the Mass Effect elephant people? Oh, God, <laughs> yes, yes. Regretfully, I didn't like watching Equestria Girls. I thought it was a very downer of a movie, if you ask me. Good thing that Megan McCarthy didn't make it canon. You know what? In the, <laughs> in the Mass Effect universe, all, all of the, um, Elcors are brownies. Oh God. <laughs> they, all they're missing is the fedoras. You have not missed. <laughs> oh God. That totally fits the part. That's some foreshadowing right there. A lot of sadness. <laughs> I have been friend zone again. <laughs> no, but I prefer I to be grumpy cat. I door. just oh. sit down with it for a big frown on my face. Alrighty then. So let me try and end this. Okay. Three, two, one. Something tells me that I completely ruined my first impression on you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> first impression? Have you two not met before? No. Nope. Oh, no, that's, we that's haven't. Interesting. That's why, oh god, I completely ruined my first impression. No, 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 no. Um, Everybody knows when we're on the show, our persona comes out. That's why I get like this. Actually, you know what? I'm not usually this vindictive, but when Daniel is around, oh my god, do I get angry. I think I, I, I think it's the compatibility issue right here. It's like I'm I'm Windows 8 and he's Mac OS. So. That's not a word. I'm not a Mac. You're not comparing me with any of that Apple. That's not a word. Oh, oh okay, God, okay, I'm okay. Not usually, I'm not usually like this. It's because this. That's not a word. No. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. The reason I de- did that because I hate Mac as well. Good to know we resonate on a on a level right now. Shut <laughs> up, oh, oh my God. God. So, um, <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, James. <laughs> uh, no, you're not sorry. That's not a word. <laughs> Nah, I'm sorry for laughing. Man. I mean, you're, not, you're not sorry whatsoever. You love being a... That's not a word. Uh, three, two, 